I've just disembarked a three night 90s theme cruise where we saw and did things that would be unthinkable on any other mainstream cruise line. I originally booked this cruise way back in 2019 and for years I had been promising my friends this amazing cruise filled with 90s bands, sunshine and fancy dress. I'd bought five first time cruises on this cruise so I was nervous. There was a very real risk that a cruise like this may put them off cruising forever. It was a very busy and a very different cruise from any other cruise. When we got to the airport we were met by a TUI rep and we were taken on the TUI transfer. This part was all very easy. We were in involved in a little bus crash at a point during this cruise but it wasn't on a TUI bus and I'll tell you more about that later. From the moment that we got into the terminal the 90s theme started, there was 90s music, there were people dressed up as 90s characters and we were given these lanyards which had the main schedule of the cruise. I'm not normally a fan of lanyards when I go on a cruise, it reminds me too much of being in an office and being at work, but these ones were really useful and they definitely did fit in with the theme. For my first time cruiser friends, this was their first time ever seeing a cruise ship up close. The cruise ship that we were sailing on was the Morella Discovery 2, who used to be Legend of the Seas for Royal Caribbean. She was built in the 90s, which did fit in quite well with the theme of this cruise. Compared to the modern Royal Caribbean cruise ships, the Morella Discovery 2 is pretty small, but she has been refurbished a lot since the 90s. I don't think you would know. I did worry a little bit about this cruise and whether it would be a good reflection of a Morella cruise. I thought that they may have to change things like the food and the service just to deal with the quantity and the type of cruise that this was, and they did have to make some changes. When we boarded, we headed straight to the theatre to do a safety drill, which is different from the way that Morella normally do it and most cruise lines do it at the moment. On most cruises, you will watch the safety video on your phone, but I think maybe on this cruise, they thought that they would never get everybody to do that unless they physically sat them down in the theatre and made them watch the presentation. It was all very easy. We watched what we needed to watch and afterwards we collected our cruise cards. Our cruise cards were bright pink and I think that they did that to try and stop us from losing them. It did work, we did all lose quite a few things during this cruise, but nobody ever lost a cruise card which is pretty impressive. We went on to find our cabins next and I had friends staying in inside cabins, ocean view cabins and balcony cabins. In true Emma style I did book an inside cabin, this channel is mostly about cruising on a budget, but interestingly even though I had an inside cabin I didn't have the cheapest cabin on the ship. Because I was cruising with so many different groups of friends, I thought that it would make sense for me to have my own cabin. Normally, if you cruise solo and you have a solo cabin, it's quite a lot more expensive than two sharing in a cabin, but it wasn't the case on this cruise. For two sharing, it was around £550, and for me, I paid £663. Theme cruises, they cost what they cost, though. This cruise sold out as soon as it went on sale. I don't think that is too bad, though, considering that's me cruising solo on a themed cruise with with drinks included, food included, gratuities included too. I was assigned cabin 3023 and I knew the person opposite me to the side of me and other people down the corridor. I will talk more later in the video about the cabin but here is a very quick preview. We were very hungry by this point, it was an early start so we decided to head to the Snack Shack. The Snack Shack is a poolside venue that they have on all of the Morella ships and they serve things like burgers and sandwiches and very importantly they do serve cookies almost all of the time. I had some chips which were very good and of course a cookie. Normally the Snack Shack will close quite early in the day but during this cruise it was open until 2 in the morning. They would hand out things like boxes of noodles and chips to everybody and it was a really good decision I think to do that. The weather was not fantastic on our first day, it was actually warmer back in the UK than on the cruise which you would never expect. We didn't let it put us off though, we sat outside and we had a drink, it was just very very windy. It was at this point that we first discovered Morella's drinks carts that they wheel around the pool deck, they had things in there like Prosecco and beer and of course some soft drinks. I did at some points manage to find some Pepsi on the ship, it was Pepsi light, not quite as good as Pepsi Max but still it was pretty nice, but the rest of the ship was a coke ship. I think in the kind of self-serve soda machines it was some kind of generic cola. I don't know what it was, it wasn't fantastic, but it was included in the cruise fare and I could have an unlimited amount, so that was brilliant. 
Every night of the cruise, we had a different fancy dress theme. Fancy dress being wearing amusing costumes. Here in the UK, we call that fancy dress. I do understand where the confusion comes, but we had different fancy dress themes every night of this cruise. On the first night, we went with a Scooby-Doo theme and I went as Velma. My friend Ruth went as Daphne. My friend Tristan went as Scooby-Doo and we even had a little Scrappy-Doo. I know I'm gonna get comments telling me that Scooby-Doo isn't the 90s, but it was going in the 90s and it was going in the noughties. Maybe we went as the noughties film version. I don't know. There were other people as Scooby-Doo too, so I think it was a good choice. We decided not to get changed into our costumes until after we had had dinner. As the cruise went on though, we noticed that most people would get changed before dinner, so we started to do that. The biggest problem though was not getting my hair from these wigs into my food and also the sleeves from all of my costumes, but I did okay. We went to the main dining room and we had a huge table for 10. Morella don't have any set dining times, you just show up to the restaurant when you're hungry and we never had to wait to get a table, even if we were a group of 10. I think on this cruise, less people were going for the sit down meals in the restaurants and more people were outside kind of drinking and eating by the pool, which was fair enough. I like to go to the sit down dinner, so we did that every day. I had friends on this cruise who I knew from school, friends from when I worked in Asda, friends from when I worked in insurance, friends who I knew from the cruise world, and I just hoped that everybody would get on during this cruise, or I would kind of have to go between all of these different groups, which would have been very confusing and very tiring. The food was very much what I expected from Morella. Some of it was very good, some of it was not so good, but I'll talk more about the food later in this video. On the first evening schedule, there was a 90s game show, there was an Oasis tribute band, a Lady Gaga tribute, and the Venga Boys, an artful dodger playing out by the pool. The tribute acts played in a couple of places on board, one of which was called the Squid and Anchor, which is supposed to be a kind of pub venue. I think that this was way too nice to be a pub. Normally pubs are darker, normally they're sticky, and this was nice and colourful. Everybody would come here and they would dance on the dance floor. This used to be called the Anchors Away Lounge when it was Royal Caribbean ship. Another venue where the tribute acts would play was this place called the Live Room. It was very colourful and this actually used to be a casino when Royal Caribbean owned it. When Morella took over the ship, they took out almost all of the machines. There's still a few in one corner, but it is a lounge, a lounge with a small casino section. A recent study by The Economist found that Americans gamble almost three times as much per person as the average Brit, so it does make sense that when the ship went from American ownership to British, they reduced the size of the casino considerably. The Australians though, they outgamble us in the UK and the Americans by quite a long way. So I would like to go on an Australian cruise and see if it is just all casino, I don't know. <laughs> The ship also has a large wraparound promenade deck and this big atrium that split over multiple levels. This really was the heart of the ship and if ever I was wandering around and I was lost and I didn't know where to go, I would head straight to the atrium and then everything kind of comes off of that. Royal Caribbean actually used to do acrobatic shows in here in the atrium when they owned it. Morella don't do any kind of acrobatics in the atrium, but they do have acrobatics in the theater. I always say that Morella cruises are one of the best when it comes to the theater entertainment, but I'm gonna be bold in this video and I'm gonna say they are my favorite. They are my best. They are consistently good and it is a different show every single night. We saw on this cruise the premiere of a new show and it was even better than the other stuff I'd seen from Morella. I'll show you some clips of it later in the video because you can actually film in the theatre on Morella Cruises which is very helpful for me. After dinner we got changed into our costumes and we went to have a drink in this area that is called Bar 11. This is one of those spaces on board that is distinctly Royal Caribbean to have a bar up this high looking out over the pool deck. There were also some specialty restaurants up here too but I never went in those during this cruise. We went to see Venga Boys perform by the pool and this was definitely one of the crew's highlights. I wish that I could play you some music here but I can't do that on YouTube. So if you don't know who the Venga Boys are, they sing they sing more than three songs but there's three songs that I think they're really famous for. One is the song that goes, we like to party, we like, we like to party, you know that one? And also boom, 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 I want you in my room, that's another one. And whoa! We're going to Ibiza. That one, you might know that song. Why they say Ibiza like that, I don't know. But we always used to just sing, whoa, we're going to eat pizza. Which was very, very fitting on this cruise because we ate a lot of late night pizza. 
I wanted to make the most out of this cruise and see as much as I could, but I also knew that we had new ports every single day and I wanted to not be too tired for those. It was tricky to balance those two things. On this cruise though, we did find out what happens if you oversleep the time that you have to be out your cabin by. It wasn't me. It was not me before you think it was me. It was one of my friends, but yes. Hmm. After a night of dancing and drinking, we were very grateful that this area, which is called the Glass House, was open for late night pizza. Normally this would be a kind of dining venue by the inside pool and they would freshly make pizzas for you for dinner, but they didn't do that on this cruise. Instead of having dinner pizza, they basically just moved all of the pizza late at night and we really appreciated that. It tasted so good. I don't know if it was good pizza or if it was just because it was that time. Late night pizza is always better, but it was very good. It was a good decision for Morella. The weather was so much better when we got to Barcelona. And to be honest with you, if it wasn't for my friends, I probably wouldn't have even got off the ship. I have been to Barcelona quite a few times before, but my friends had never been. So we decided that we needed to see all of the touristy things in Barcelona. Morella did have a shuttle available that you could book, but by booking that shuttle, it meant that you had a fixed amount of time in Barcelona, and I quite like to be able to come and go whenever I like. I have walked into Barcelona plenty of times. It is a long walk, but it's fine. But I thought after a night of dancing and partying to the Venga Boys, it would make sense if we got the bus. We did get the local bus. It is just called Cruise Bus, to keep it simple, and it cost €4.50 Euros return. They do only accept cash, though, so that's the only thing that makes it a bit more difficult but we never had to wait the bus was always there we did get involved in a little bit of a bus crash on the way back but it was all fine we went back to the place where we got off the bus and we got on a new bus this one was quite busy so we were standing right at the front near the driver i think before we had already set off the bus driver and a taxi had had some sort of mean words it didn't seem like they were friends and as we were going onto the main roundabout by the columbus monument the taxi came in front of us, we had to emergency stop, everybody fell over and we were fine. The only casualty was one of my nails that snapped and also I have a terrible bruise on my bum because I fell into a bar. But apart from that, it was totally fine. When we got back to the ship, we wandered around and we tried to find the self-service wine and fosters taps. This is one of the things that I had promised my friends way back in 2019. One of the things that I used to tempt them to try their first cruise was that there would be wine and fosters on tap. We did manage to find it. It was in the buffet. There was also a self-serve soda machine there too. It wasn't fantastic, but that was one thing I could kind of tick off my cruise list. I would definitely prefer it if it was a Pepsi machine, like in the Harvester or something like that, but it was good to be able to get this whenever we wanted to without ever having to queue up or ask anybody. Morella's cruises are all inclusive as standard, but that doesn't mean that everything on the cruise is included. There was a good selection of beers and cocktails and soft drinks, but there were also pages of cocktails that cost extra. I personally just didn't turn the page. I just didn't look at things that cost extra and I just drank the things that I'd already paid for. So that was good. I actually came back from this cruise with the lowest onboard spend that I've ever had on a cruise, and I'll tell you what that is later. The second fancy dress theme was 90s versus noughties fashion. I dressed as Avril Lavigne and a very specific look that she had in 2004. Looking back through my photos now, I don't recognize myself with this long blonde hair, but I really love this outfit. It was so easy to jump around to the music in these trousers and the pockets were so big that I could put my phone fully into my pocket. I've not been able to put my phone fully into a pocket for years because whoever creates women's clothing just thinks that we don't need pockets. And spoiler alert, we definitely do need pockets. I probably could have held about eight phones. I had so many pockets. We got changed before dinner and we ate in the Italian restaurant, which is also included. I've eaten there before and I know that the best dessert on the menu is called a trio of tiramisu. I actually don't like regular tiramisu, but the other two are fantastic. And I just gave the regular tiramisu to one of my friends. That evening in the theatre, we saw a production called Rockology and my friend Ian was in the front row dressed as Slash with his big hand and his air guitar. The dancers and the singers really interacted with him, which was really cool. And I bet it was different for those dancers and singers to look out and see everybody in these really strange costumes. There weren't ever many of us watching the theater shows, but those of us who were there were very enthusiastic. As we walked in, they would have the tables of drinks and they would hand you a cocktail. Most of the time, I didn't even know what was in it. I just thought I'll have the blue one today, I'll have the green one today. And 
it was good. I miss that on other cruise lines. I really miss being handed a drink as you walk into the theater. Lots of cruise lines now don't let you take drinks in. They don't have bars. They don't have anything like that. And I like that on a Morella cruise. The theatre team were really brilliant and all of the crew on board were really nice. You could tell sometimes that they were busy, especially in the bars in the evening, but I can't fault anything with any member of the crew and I definitely wouldn't want to. I can't imagine working on a cruise ship and seeing on your schedule that a three day 90s cruise is coming up. Just clearing the drinks from beside the pool was a job that never ended. They were going round and around with these little box, just collecting the drinks. After the show finished, I ran to see the McBusted tribute. I literally ran. And out of our friend group that started in the theater, I was the only one to make it to McBusted. I lost everybody else along the way, but I really wanted to see the McBusted tribute. That really is the problem with doing such a short cruise is everything is on at the same time and everything overlaps. There's just no way that you can see everything. You just can't, it's not possible. Side note, but the song Year 3000 is a busted song. I've met so many people from outside the UK who think that it's a Jonas Brothers song. And I just need to let you know, it's definitely a busted song. Your Britishism of the week cannot be anything other than the noughties. I've said it many times throughout this video and I've had so many questions asking me, what are the noughties? In the UK, the noughties is what we call the 2000s. And please do let me know what you call this where you're from, because I can't imagine if this was the 90s versus 2000s cruise. That's just not as catchy. 90s versus noughties. That's what we call it. The day two acts included a pink tribute, Gals Aloud and DJ Sash. We danced away another night by the pool, but I knew that the next day in Valencia, we had booked a proper cruise line excursion. And also my friend Patrick promised that he would be doing the rock climbing wall. So we needed to be in a good state for that. Our excursion in Valencia only cost £24 per person and it was mostly one of those bus-based tours where you get off and you have a photo stop and you do a bit of a walking tour. The weather actually reached the mid-20 degrees Celsius on this cruise, which for us Brits was absolutely glorious. This cruise was almost, if not entirely, made up of British people. It is possible to book a Morella cruise from outside the UK, but you normally have to book it cruise only, and you may have to use something like PayPal, because Morella's website doesn't seem to like cards that are from outside the UK. Morella definitely don't make it easy to book a Morella cruise from outside the UK, but cruises like this theme cruise, it sold out incredibly fast. I suppose Morella just don't really need to look outside the UK for passengers. It's much easier for them if they can get everybody on the same flights, on the same buses, to the same cruise. And that is what they normally do. If you are from the UK and booking a Morella cruise, if you're a member of the cashback website, Complete Savings, you can get 10% cashback on Morella cruises. This is a paid cashback website, so do your research. But I've been using it for the last couple of years. No problems. Just throwing that out there, it's an idea. After coming back from this excursion, my friend Chris let me have a look around his cabin. He was opposite me on the other side of the corridor, which meant that he had a big window. His cabin was a little bit bigger than mine, but the design was pretty much the same. I think that the design of the cabins is one area which does kind of date the ship. There is nothing wrong with these cabins at all. We had so much storage, the bed was very comfortable, but I just think this design and this type of wood kind of does date the ship. I did think it was interesting that in the inside cabin, Morella didn't put kettles as standard. You had to ask if you wanted one, but if you were in an ocean view or a balcony cabin, all of my friends in the other cabins had kettles as standard. Just because we were in the inside cabins doesn't mean we like tea any less. But on this cruise, I didn't ask for the kettle. I spent barely any time in my cabin. It would have been pointless. I was really only actually in my cabin from around one or two in the morning until around 9 a.m. I would go back before dinner to get changed, but that was the only time I spent in there. The shower did have a shower curtain and I know how much some people don't like that. It didn't bother me at all though. The one thing that I did find slightly annoying was that there was barely any room to get around the bed. Not a problem for me. I was cruising by myself. I just jumped straight onto the bed. But if you were somebody who was a little bit less mobile, you would struggle to get round the side of the bed. You just have to go on from the end. One thing that I did like was that the lamps that were by the bed had a USB underneath so that I could lay in bed and charge my phone. I didn't buy a Wi-Fi package on this cruise. We were in port most of the time and the rest of the cruise was just incredibly busy. So it wasn't something that I needed. I'm pretty sure that around half the people on this cruise never got off in port. That wasn't the point of the cruise to them. And they just wanted to make the most out of the sunshine, the drinks, 
drinks, enjoy the time on the top deck, and that is totally cool. At this point, I hope that my friends were enjoying the cruise. It seemed like they were, but you never really know. And I think I cared more about if my friends were enjoying it rather than myself. This was an amazing, interesting way to start cruising. This was not a normal cruise. It was around now that the letters arrived in our cabins that let us know when we needed to be off the ship by. We had transfers back to the airport, but our flight wasn't until 5 p.m. So I really didn't want Morella to kind of disembark us at 9 a.m. and make us spend the day in the airport. Thankfully, we were allowed to stay on the ship until 2 p.m., which meant that we saw the new people getting on the cruise. And the way that the cruise kind of changed on that last day was something I've never experienced before. But I'll talk about that more later in the video. We decided that we wanted to try out the mini golf course that we had seen on the top deck. My friend Patrick said that he would have a go at the rock climbing wall and to his credit he did do it and he did do it very well. He got about halfway up one of the walls. The rest of us made our excuses and decided that we would rather play mini golf. I was wearing a dress I couldn't possibly have done rock climbing and there is no way that I could have got changed. Well that's what I said anyway so. The night's theme was school uniform, which I think is a bit of an odd theme. It's not my favourite theme, but I decided to go as Ginny Weasley from Harry Potter because I figure Hogwarts is a school and that is kind of a school uniform. Not something I would normally wear, but it was fun to wear this. It was then that we watched a brand new show for Marilla and the only way that I can describe it really is like a modern day Rocky Horror Picture Show. The songs were really catchy, the dancers and the singers were great and visually it just looked very, very interesting. Mar Morella do win quite a few awards for their entertainment and I definitely do agree. It is the same show team who do different shows night after night. Every night is a different show. No repeating like there are on some of the bigger cruise lines. And how they remember it, I don't know, but they do. The dancers and the singers, everything. It was perfect. So cool. It was a little bit more difficult than usual to kind of dance in my Harry Potter cape, but I used my wand to kind of reach when Reach from S Club 7 came on. My Harry Potter wand was in one piece when I went on the cruise. When I arrived, it was in two pieces. And when I got it home again, it was in three pieces. Um, maybe that's the mark of a good cruise. How many pieces your wand's broken into? I don't know. The day three acts were a Coldplay tribute band, a Robbie Williams tribute band, Atomic Kitten, the real Atomic Kitten, and also Vernon Kay was DJing. I wish that I could play some audio here, but I'm afraid I can't. Vernon Kay had other people up on the stage singing in a kind of strange karaoke in order to win bottles of champagne. I don't think I was as drunk as everybody else there, but it was nice to see everybody having a good time. I met so many lovely people on this cruise. It was kind of like if you go on a night out and you go to the toilets, everybody's friendly, everybody compliments each other's hair and their dresses. It was like that, but it was all the time on this cruise. I had so many lovely conversations in the toilets with random people and so many people took photos with me, which was so cool, so cool. On the last day of the cruise, the atmosphere really did change. It was very, very noticeable. We were on one of the later flights, which meant that we were on the ship until two, but lots of other people had to get off at 8, 9, 10 in the morning to catch their flights back home. We did have to be out of the cabins by 8.30 and by cruise standards, 8.30 is pretty generous. My friend Patrick didn't manage to get up in time. So we did find out what happens if you don't leave your room on time. And it turns out the crew just kind of nicely asked my friend Patrick to leave. He said that they were very polite. They didn't come in there kind of banging pots and pans, flicking on and off the lights. They just kind of encouraged him to leave the room and he did manage to do that. He came up to the pool deck and slept there for most of the day. <laughs> It was so strange to see children running around when we had been on this adult only party cruise for three days. I did wonder what those new passengers thought getting on the cruise and seeing all of us there. It was not abnormal on our cruise at all to see people drinking at 10 in the morning by the pool. And then to go from that to seeing a child running around was very, very strange. Things like the food and service also changed on the last day. There was so much more choice in the buffet. I found a Yorkshire pudding, which was fantastic. And they had a lot of things like salads, which I don't know if they had those before. When we were sat by the pool on the last day, the waiters would come round and they would offer us a drink. The trolleys would be there. There wouldn't be huge queues. I tried to make sure that my friends knew that this was what a Morella cruise was normally like and that the last few days were not a normal representation of a Morella cruise. There were absolutely no COVID restrictions on this cruise. There were no masks, there were no temperature scans, there was no social distancing. Apart from the test that we had to do before we went on the cruise, it was as if COVID did not exist. It was very nice. 
Speaking to some of my first time cruiser friends on the way home, they said that they had a fantastic time and that for the next cruise, they might like to do something a little bit more relaxed, which I totally understand. But the fact that they said for their next cruise means that this has not put them off cruising and that they will do it again. And that makes me so unbelievably happy. You may have noticed in this video that my hair changes a lot. That's because the day before this cruise, my friend Ruth, who you've seen in this video, shaved my head as part of a charity fundraiser. We have raised 41,000 US dollars as of right now, and donation links are still open if you haven't donated already. Normally at this point in the video, I will say something to try and make this video sound really interesting, but I don't really know what to say about this other than watch me shave my head on YouTube live. I think that's as interesting as I can make a video. So watch this next.